Have you ever heard of the world's shortest war? It occurred in 1896 between the British Empire and the Sultan of Zanzibar and lasted only 40 minutes. Stay tuned to this video from Daily Dose of History to learn more. As with much of the rest of the world, colonial Britain increased its grip over all of East Africa, including the island of Zanzibar, in the late 19th century. Despite the Sultan Said Sid ibn Sun's expansion of Zanzibar's regional holdings and global mercantile relevance in the first half of the century, Bargash, his successor, was pres pressured into submitting to the European powers and dividing his territory between the British and the Germans, a trend later sultans also had to follow. By 1890, Britain had persuaded the Sultanate to pass control of the island to the Empire by becoming a British protectorate, while simultaneously forfeiting their claims of mainland lands to Germany. While stressing the Sultan's authority was symbolic only, Britain decided to maintain the Sultanate as an institution. Britain had two major policy objectives when it took over the ruling of Zanzibar. The elimination of slavery and the revival of the island's robust merchant economy. The Zanzibari merchants were upset by the economic policies, but they were much more upset by the policies regarding slavery, which had become an essential part of their way of life as spice plantations rose in importance over the course of the 19th century. Until his death in 1893, Said defied the British directives, and when it came time to select his successor, Britain made it clear that it expected the next Sultan to be more deferential to imperial authority. The British supported Ahmad ibn Thuwan out of the other contenders for the throne. Even though Zanzibari succession laws did not make the sultanship hereditary, a rebellious Prince Khalid ibn Bragash seized a palace in retaliation. He justified his position on being the sole son of the late Bargash and on being looked over following Bargash's passing. Khalid was persuaded to renounce his claim by British officials, establishing Ahmad as the undisputed ruler. In spite of Hamad's initial compliance, in 1896, he had become disgruntled with Zanzibar's protector and went so far as to form a 1,000-man military unit that was exclusively subject to the Sultan. On August 25th of that year, Hamad passed away, igniting yet another succession dispute. Assuming that Ahmud ibn Muhammad would be a more docile ruler who would support the abolition of slavery, the British chose him to succeed. Khalid would not, however, be overlooked a third time. He captured the palace and proclaimed himself the Sultan of Zanzibar. Khalid encircled the palace with roughly 3,000 of the Sultan's loyal troops, a small gun battery, and the armed royal yacht Glasgow, which was stationed in the adjacent harbor, aided them. In return, the British gathered a band of somewhere between 400 to 900 Zanzibari troops and a group of British marines. There were also five formidable Royal Navy ships in the harbor. Khalid received a warning from Rear Admiral Harry Rawson of HMS St. George, ordering him to, and his forces to leave the palace premises and give up their weapons by 9 a.m. on August 27th or face British bombardment. Khalid rejected the ultimatum, as he thought the British would not dare fire on the palace. He was wrong, though, and keeping to his word, Rawson gave the order for HMS Raccoon, Thrush, and Sparrow to begin shelling the palace at 9 a.m. The palace was soon consumed by flames. Despite the Glasgow's returning fire on the St. George, Rawson soundly beat the yacht. By the time the British halted firing 40 minutes later, Khalid's forces had suffered around 500 casualties, and only one British sailor had suffered a serious injury. Khalid surrendered and subsequently eluded capture, seeking safety in the German consulate during the chaos after the battle. Ahmad ibn Muhammad was appointed Zanzibar sultan by that afternoon. The new sultan endorsed the British mandates for the eradication of slavery without hesitation and quickly agreed to all of their stipulations about his position and its relevancy. Khalid was granted approval by the Germans to reside in exile in Dar es Salaam on the mainland, where he stayed up until the British captured him during World War I. In 1927, Khalid passed away in Mombasa. Zanzibar remained a British protectorate without further incident all the way until 1963. Thanks for clicking on this video, and if you feel I've earned it, please like, comment, and subscribe, or dislike if you feel the need to. But as always, you don't have to do any of that if you don't want to, so feel free to enjoy more videos from Daily Dose of History either way. Thank you so much.